I lost track of how long it had been, looking out the window into the forest, dodging branches as they tried to swat into my face. There was nothing to see, of course, no way that the marauders could have gotten in front of us and staged an ambush. What I was looking for, along with my friends, my brothers, is any potential new threats. We were potentially heading from one threat into another, dragging our problems with us. We kept rumbling up the grade, the semi in front of us taking point. They were higher up and could see possible threats that we could not. We were about 50 feet behind the semi. We wanted to make sure if there was an ambush that we could get out to flank and cover them. Also, that an improvised explosive couldn't hit both of us, then with little notice, the semi stopped. The semi in front of us unloaded and started taking positions. We all hopped out as well, and I grabbed my bag as I went. It was good because I wasn't sure if I, if I could handle the guys in the back much longer talking about eating crayons. This color was better. No, that color was better. I know in Boy Scouts we ate chalk, so I understood the humor, I, I think. We all took positions also, or we all took positions also. And our CO went up front to see why we stopped. Turns out that we had come to a logging bridge at this point in the journey. It was always a good idea to inspect these just to make sure. There were usually a freight car dropped in between both sides with a lumber built up around to make a makeshift bridge. It would also be a good ambush point. Everyone spread out and took, an ob took observation positions. It would also, uh, it would also lessen, lessen the load the vehicles had on the bridge. Beneath the bridge was inspected via drone. One of the guys had a drone so we didn't have to climb down, which would have been very dangerous. While he was doing that, the scouts came back and saw no signs of ambushers. Most of the team went ahead of the bridge, waiting for the vehicles to cross. A few stayed behind. Bridges could also be slippery, so everyone was really careful crossing the bridge. When I crossed, I took a few pictures of the creek on both sides. It was raging away and looked very cold. If our vehicles fell, we would have to do the rest of this mission <laughs> without vehicles. It would be very difficult, and we still weren't technically very far. I crossed, then the semi carefully moved across the bridge. It had to be a steady crossing because any sudden burst could cause traction to be lost and the vehicle spinning itself right off the bridge. I tensely watched the semi move towards me across the bridge at a, a very even pace, foot barely on the pedal. This method also assured the bridge could evenly distribute the load. Everything seemed to be holding up fine. I took a second to look at the features of the vehicle. It was a rugged logging truck, one I always dreamed of owning myself. It had a beefy steel cage on the front and was turquoise. As it got closer to me, it looked like an aggressive truck monster that could take anything. The tires were giant single tires, extremely over-engineered and as tough as they came, with deep grooves to get through the mud. The semi had aftermarket exhaust stacks coming out both sides behind the sleeper cab going straight up. I took a picture before I forgot. The truck looked simply epic. Then I backed up onto the bank to let the truck pass and saw no urea tank. This truck had been built before the Environmental Protective Agency screwed us again, setting us further behind the rest of the world. These trucks weren't too rare yet, but they were getting there. The good thing was that parts were always available and they were easy to work on. This truck was definitely a valuable find. I didn't see any independent markings on it, but I didn't see any corporate branding on it either, so I assumed it was a fleet vehicle that simply didn't have any branding. The semi safely passed, so it was the van's turn. The driver girl effortlessly drove the van over the bridge, as if she'd performed the same task a million times before. I turned to look, and people were finding trees, so I went to find one as well as soon as they were done. When I came back, they were having a conversation. They said that the marauders indeed got funneled up the logging road. The south ambush team was able to then reunite with the north ambush team, and they headed to safety. It was all up to us now. We still had several vehicles and close to 200 people following us. The odds were still nowhere near in our favor, but we definitely had whittled them down quite a bit. I guess the hundred unaccounted for either perished in the ambushes, were wounded and stayed behind, or been demoralized and fled completely. Hopefully that was leaving some of the rest somewhat demoralized as well. 
If not, they would be as soon as they came across that trailer full of logs. I'm sure they wouldn't want to risk more ambushes and would take this path. If they were smart enough, they would figure out some way of moving the obstacle. I imagined all of them getting out and pushing it out of the way. I wonder if that was even possible. I debated suggested blowing the chains off the logs and having the logs tumble down, but that seemed like a waste when this would do fine. They finished their conversation and confirmed the next set of plans, and we all hopped in and up the hill we went. We drove for a while without speaking much, and I drank some more water. We'd been on this road for some time, and I wonder how far it went. I tried to remember the dreams I'd had the night before, but I couldn't. After what seemed like hours, but it could have been a couple minutes, we stopped again. Looked like a clearing was ahead from what I could tell. Nobody got out, so I stayed put as well. And Within a minute or two, the semi pulled ahead and we followed. I was wondering to myself why we didn't clear this new area, but I understood soon enough. There was a few more of our vehicles already on the other side. I had a feeling this is where we would be parting ways. Chapter 17, Uncivilized Roads, Mid-Morning, Day 2 There was a road running north and south that I could see now. We parked and everyone got out of their vehicles, so I got out as well, grabbing my bag and rifle as I went. I noticed that they left their vehicles running. That would be either because we wouldn't be here long or we were at an increased threat for an ambush. I realized I still had my mechanics gloves and snow hat on. I took my snow hat off and put it in my pack and dug out my camo boonie hat. If my ears got cold, I could simply adjust my shimog to cover my ears. It was slowly starting to warm up, although there was a breeze now. I put on my boonie hat and cinched up the drawstring so it couldn't fly away. I'd look a little funny with it cinched up, but I'd rather look funny than lose my awesome hat. I adjusted the brim a little to get the sun out of my eyes. I saw the guys talking, so I slowly walked over, waiting to get invited to the conversation. They were talking about how the mission was essentially over, and that everyone was heading back to the stronghold to complete bolstering it in case the 200 marauders attacked. It was a long shot, but they think they could maybe hold it off if they were lucky. I turned and looked, and someone closed and locked the logging gate. The guy that closed and locked the gate came over to me and told me they'd done the same at the entrance gate. The marauders had posted a few people at the gate, but they had no attention span and before long had abandoned it. There was a possibility they had someone with a key or knew the combinations and would eventually get through the gates. If they did try to retreat, though, they would see it as just as much of a hassle to retreat as it would be to move forward. I let them know I thought that that was a great idea. They could probably only cover 20 miles or so a day on foot and with a lot less gear. I guess there was a counter risk of them deciding to live in that forest. Hopefully we didn't trap them in there too good. The guys were all huddled up talking about how there would be a second mission springing from this that was purely voluntary. Obviously all of our missions were voluntary, but the alternative was to try to fight alone. Now that was acceptable, unacceptable for us. The new voluntary mission was to take the vans into the city and draw the marauders even further away from our stronghold. The city was supposed to be abandoned. Passing through it would bog down the other side, trying to scavenge it for resources. Almost nobody was volunteering. There were only two so far. They were close friends of mine, so I immediately volunteered without thinking of personal consequence. One guy was built like a tank. He was the owner of the RV from earlier. The other was our XO. Our CO came over to thank us both for volunteering. We knew he had to go where he was safest most, so... It was no problem. He would be going back to the stronghold, chauffeured by our driver. Right then we heard two more vehicles drive up. We recognized them right away as ours, and another one of our friends jumped out. He was our armorer. He tossed the keys to someone, joined our side, high-fiving all of us. He was carrying a bunch of odd and ed odds and ends I figured I'd worry about later and tossed them in the van. That made four of us total. Our comms, which was also our security guy, shrugged his shoulders. His girlfriend smacked his shoulder and they had a little play fight and then embraced. He sauntered over and that made five of us. We looked around and nobody else would join. Nobody said anything so I spoke up. Guys, this has been surreal and everyone did an amazing job. Thanks for everything and we will see you on the other side. Everyone nodded, really unable to speak. They hopped in their vehicles. 
Plenty of room now for the extra guys that we had. The semi drove off with the convoy, and there we were in the street, alone. I hopped in the back of the van with our armorer and tank. Our XO and comms guy climbed in the front, and then we headed towards the abandoned town.